want you to start preparing these things now so you don't lose any time because every document that is missing anything that you don't have is going to actually slow you down check the university's requirements well read everything carefully hello my wonderful people how are you all doing hope you're all doing well my name is phoebe and you are most welcome to the phoebe way on the phoebe way we talk about life in germany settling within germany moving to germany and everything that makes your life in germany easier as an expat and as a foreigner today's video is about studying in germany okay how to apply to german universities as a foreigner first i'm going to talk to you about how to apply for bachelor programs and then we talk about master programs and at the end i'll give you some tips on how to fund your studies slash scholarships okay scholarships 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 that's what we're talking about today my people so i asked you guys to send me questions and one of the most frequent questions was is it true that tuition in germany is free yes partly yes it's true it's true because in the 16 regions of germany in 15 of these regions tuition is free you only have to pay what is called the semester by track, something like the administrative fee and in some regions it actually also covers your bus ticket like for public transport as well okay so it depends on what region you you are in the university you are in and where you live actually because some people are actually not covered by all by all the public transport systems so please check with your university as well okay the only region where you have to pay tuition as a foreign student is Baden-Württemberg yes in the Mercedes state in the Porsche state you have to pay school fees and for foreign students international students it is about 1500 euros per sem that is one thing so if you want to dodge that stick with me to the end of this video so that we talk about how you can dodge the funding how you can get scholarship so you don't have to be the one paying this from your own pocket all right okay if you want to know about how to apply for a visa a german student's visa i have two three videos on that actually so the first video i'm going to link up here i'm also going to link them in the description box down below so you can check them out and then also i have videos discussions i've had with kim who also came to germany as an international student because even though she's a German citizen, she didn't have the German abitur, so she had to come here and do student colleague. So if you have a similar path like him, please check out that video. I'm going to click that one here as well. So you check that out. There are actually two videos in two parts. So one is the application process, and the second one, the part two, is actually how the student's life in Germany is with finding accommodation, with the cost of living, and all of that. Okay? Good. Now let's get into how to apply for the bachelor program i'm going to break this down into maybe six to seven steps and if you have any questions to any of the steps just let me know um, comment down below or send me an email i'll gladly answer and if i see that some questions are actually coming up I'll, i might actually do a video on that as well okay so let's start with how to apply for a bachelor's program how do you apply for a bachelor's program Number one, you need to know what school you're going to, okay? Which university would you decide on? How you do that is you ask yourself, what do I want to study? Which university offers that? And which location? We've already talked about not all um, tuition, or not all regions are tuition free. But if you don't know what you want to study, try testas.de, testas.de. It, it, gives, it gives you some kind of orientation. You can take tests to determine what is your strength and what not. Maybe you'll pass, it tells you you should study medicine, but actually want to study something like engineering. It doesn't matter, just download the results as well and add it to your application um, documents, okay? We'll get to the application in a bit. So, you can also check out DAAD. DAAD.D is a key website for you if you do not know what to study, if you don't know what, how to go about, if you don't know how to apply. Even when it comes to scholarship, DAAD is very, very, very essential, okay? So do not sleep on DAAD, guys. Just check that website out first, okay? When it comes to where you want to go, so don't just think about it being a prestigious state or a prestigious city. So for example, if you choose Munich, beware that Munich has a high cost of living, okay? 
there are families in Munich that live in one room because apartments are expensive okay it is real like that so if you choose like a school in Berlin in Leipzig in Köln or Cologne these are a bit cheaper than even Stuttgart okay so if you do not want to stress yourself so much about finances please try and read which cities are cheaper to live in what is the average um, price for a square meter of, of space for room for rent you know please check all those out okay good so now you've decided on the university you want to go to the next thing is you have to know which requirement you have to bring okay of course there are general requirements that you have to bring your um, high school diploma or your high school leaver certificate and in Germany you have to we usually have to bring the Hochschulzugangsberechtigung okay that is basically what the high school leaver certificate is that is what actually allows us to attain higher education what allows us to enter the universities so that is one thing that you should not sleep on Please check whether the country you are in actually requires you to take a German um, test equivalent to the German Abitur, you know. Some courses you have to do with some universities want that, so check the university's requirements well. Read everything carefully. Check the list and take everything off that you have. Mark what you don't have because even the same university may be having different regulations for different courses. So please check that out well, okay. So the general requirements could be that you have to show your passport copy, you have to show, as I said, the school leavers, the high school diploma, the school leaver certificate, you have to bring a passport picture, they will need a passport picture for your student's ID card, of course, and um, similar things. I'm going to list this, I'm going to list those things right here. So this are this one thing. And then after you have read the requirements provided by the school, the next step then would be that because it's a bachelor's degree most courses actually are in german a few of them start in english and then maybe after the third semester translate into the german language so if you have to study in german you have to bring the proficiency and that will be c1 c2 check the requirements of the university as well so c1 or c2 and then you can take those tests from goethe from test staff from dsh i'm going to list all those tests right here for you to have an idea that there are different kinds of tests required from different schools okay and some schools might not even want you to do the test in your home country or prove the proficiency before you come they'll actually let you come and then learn the language first before you start with your course number four then would be think about your funding okay think about your funding if you have watched my um, video on german v uh, students visa you would know that i've talked about how to how to prove your funding because they would need that for the for the visa as well and this is the time that you start thinking about it are you going to have your parents um sign that they're going to be the one sponsoring your education are you going to have somebody in germany a german resident who is living in germany and working in germany also sponsor you he has to provide his pay slips and all of that is that what you want to go for if you don't have any of the first two options then you can think of or you have to think of doing the uh, blocked account so the german blocked account is is this plan whereby you actually put away your one year um, upkeep money okay in the German bank and you can you get paid out this money every month okay last year the amount of money you had to pay or you had to keep away for the for for the month was 853 euros and you have to do this times 12 so for the whole year so it's 53 times so that was 2020 2021 it's 861 euros times 12 that is about 10,332 or something euros so check that out some of the banks that you can work with they have Fintipa, they have Deutsche Bank so check what works in your home country and work on that all right so the blocked account start thinking about it okay and then now that you have thought about your blocked account think about the next thing your health insurance your health insurance guys for international students they need to have their um, health insurance for the period of time that they'll be in Germany okay so most people use dr. Walter I'm going to write that um, his name right here as well so dr. Walter they have schemes for 
um, international students, Erasmus students, and all of that. I'm going to leave his link, um, his link. I'm going to leave the insurance company link in the description box down below, so you have an idea. You can read through and see how you can plan it. That's what most international students use. Okay, good. So now you have all these things. So now we, we have. I think we should be about step five. Now step six: apply to the university. As you have the requirements, they have asked of you. Now, when it comes to the application, you have to know that every university is different. That's why I started with the requirements, because generally in Germany, for the winter semester, the application window starts or opens um, early May till 15th of July. That is the deadline from early May to 15th of July. So you have about six weeks to apply, right? Good. Now, for the summer semester, it starts somewhere in January, and it starts somewhere in, in December till 15th of January. That is the deadline for the summer semester as well. All right. So keep that in mind. But I want you to start looking now because some schools have different policies. Okay. Some schools want to start earlier. And once you start early and you read what they require from you and what they required from the past people, like they required from past years, you have a fair idea of which documents you have to gather. This is why I'm talking to you about it today and not next month, all right? Because next month is already, already going to be April, but I want you to start preparing these things now so you don't lose any time because every document that is missing, anything that you don't have, is going to actually slow you down. Because the university will then ask you, bring this, bring that, bring this, bring that. If you want to save yourself the hustle, there is this great website that Kim talked about in the other video as well, Uni Assist, uni-assist.de. They can actually lead you so you know which um, universities have actually have the um, restrictions through the numerous clauses. Numerous clauses is, is used in order to limit how many students are accepted in a program, okay? So with medicine, you have to have a certain score in your abitur to be able to be allowed to study medicine in Germany, in law as well, in different um, disciplines. So it depends on the location of the university because some, some universities in different regions don't even care, they don't have any NC. Some universities do. So when you use UniAssist, they are going to let you know which documents have to be legalized, which documents have to, trans have to be translated, which documents have to be um, certified and all of that. So if you want to save yourself the hustle as well, try UniAssist. And once you use UniAssist, you can also apply to different universities at the same time and able to have better chances at getting admission in Germany, okay? So if you're applying, just don't put all your eggs or don't put one egg in one basket. No, just choose at least 10 universities and spread them eggs. Spread it. You will definitely get one. You will definitely get one university that will say, yes, you can join us. All right. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Good. So apply. The next step would be to prepare for your visa. Your German student's visa. Check what the requirements are for your home country so you know how to apply. But I would say this, choose an early visa interview appointment. Choose an early one because the embassy does not care when you have to start your course. If you not take care, you have to actually start later or the next semester and you are losing time because every semester is six months, you get it. So if you want to be able to get everything done, make sure that your appointments are early and do not sit there and be hesitate or anything. Just do with sharp sharp, it will work, okay? Get your documents together. And if you want to know more about German student visa, I have a full video on that. I'm going to link that here as well. So you check it out. The only difference between that video is that it was 2020 and the blocked account amount was different at that time. Now in this video, it is 861 times 12. All right. That is the amount you need to have in your block account. All right. So now you have applied for the visa. Of course, you'll be granted the visa. The time you should said your visa appointment should be about six weeks um, after you have actually applied because that's around the time that they actually sent out the um, TUSAG and the confirmation and admission. So you go for the visa appointment, you get your visa. The next step is, the last but not the least, you find accommodation. Find accommodation can be quite a hustle. It is not for the faint-hearted, okay? But it is doable. So. I talked about that also in the video with Kim that you can try from the student's um, hostel, try getting like a single room 
in a shared apartment most of the time you'd be lucky with that um, you can also try expert groups they also normally have a lot of information so emo vet emo scout the gate to make i think it's the gate to make but i'll put the name as well so you, ch you check the accommodation thing out and so the last but not the least is you have to be able to settle in quite easily so even before you come to Germany, try to reach out to other students on the campus of the university. Try to reach out to experts in your um, community. So let's say if you're coming to study in Munich, join the Munich Experts Group on Facebook. Tell them you're coming to study. You want to meet people. You want to be able to practice your German. You want to be able to take trips with other people. You want to be able to find jobs because even though you have you've done the, um, even though you have set up your blocked account. 861 euros is not really a lot of money it's just enough to get you through so if you want to have like part-time jobs um, on the side you need people to connect you okay so number eight last but not the least connect connect before you come to Germany and that is very very essential okay good so that is for the bachelor's degree now let's move on to the master's degree with the master's degree the procedure is similar but the only difference is that of course, you don't have to just produce your high school diploma, you just provide all of it, but the difference is that you have to provide a suitable bachelor's degree as well. So depending on your course, you have to um, provide the bachelor's degree as well. And then, in your case, you might not have to show the proficiency for the German language, but I would advise you, in order to make your things go faster and to make things easier for you, try doing A1 or A2 in your home country so that even if you don't, um, needed for your course you might need it in your social life your day-to-day -day life okay if you want to stay in Germany and work later you already have the basics so all you have to do is top it up to B1 B2 and once you have the basics before you come to the country once you're in the country you pick up faster okay you don't have to start from scratch and it's going to make you like make you like Germany more because you already understand some of the language so your life in Germany is not going to be difficult like that like somebody who has to start all all the way from scratch okay so that is what I would tell you about the language even though you don't have to prove it and also for the bachelors if you if you have sometimes you also have to prove um, your English proficiency that's why you have to do TOEFL and the um, IELTS check those out as well especially as i said it depends on your university okay it really depends on university i could come here and tell you anything but it would not apply to other universities all right good so with the masters that is the only difference basically the same procedure but the language might fall away and then you can you actually have to produce your bachelor's degree your bachelor's degree certificate as well that is actually suitable for the program that you are choosing so with you the same thing read the um, requirements on the university's website and one thing you have to know is that every university has a part or a section of its website dedicated specifically to admi um, admission processes okay so check if your university also works with uni assist and check if they have um, a special part for international students as well they mostly do so check that as well and see if your university works with uni assist and that will be even easier for you because you can apply to multiple universities at once right good so we've talked about bachelors we talked about masters i told you we'll talk about scholarships as well scholarships a lot of people know about the daad.de i would i would really really um implore you to check the, those sites out daad.de um studying in germany.org there, there are there's also um, my German University I think my German University I'm going to put all those links here as well those links you have to put into Google to check out the information that they have everything I've told you here today they have it even more specific for different disciplines as well so check that out when it comes to scholarships there's actually there are actually scholarships for international students that many people do not know about okay so apart from DAAD there's also KAAD so the KAAD is just a Catholic version it's just a Catholic version of DAAD. So that is the difference. We have the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung scholarships. We have the Heinrich Böll Foundation scholarships in Germany for international students as well. And of course, there's a Deutschland Stipendium. That's a national scheme that is made for talented, bright students. So if your grades are up, 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 up there, try Deutschland Stipendium, okay? Apply for that. And of course, there's Erasmus scholarship programs for 
um, German students or international students as well, check that out before you even apply. If it, if it applies to you, check Erasmus out. And then we also have the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung Scholarship. That is also number five. So guys, these are the scholarships that are available for you. Check them out. I hope this video helps you for your applications for academic year 2021-2022, winter semester and the 2022 summer semester. If you have any other questions, don't forget, put them in the comment section below or just email me at ldvwithphoebe at gmail.com. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you next Sunday with more information on life in Germany. Tschüss!